Joy Gurudev, Joy Mahashamu Mahadev, Sana Bhavatu. What is your question? Why is building a temple or an ashram necessary? Nowadays everything is online. Everyone can meditate online in their own privacy of their house. Why do we need an ashram and a temple? So, instead that money can go for other charity works. We are already doing a lot of charity works, so we don't have a excess money or balance money to build up the ashram. All the money that we were getting to build up the ashram, all the courses that we were teaching, all the money that we were getting has been utilized, you know, for various reasons. Uh, we have distributed food grains. This committee people know it. And we have also recently started putting videos on this. We have distributed notebooks, MBBS books, you know, uh, there was no space to keep them. That many books were, uh, you know, given to the MBBS students from first to fourth year. So many books were there. Uh, Mask, sanitizer, food grains, we are doing mandara, clothes we are giving. Whatever you say, we are putting our effort, our money, our time into that. We are planting 75,000 trees in you know, the 75th Independence Day, 75th year old India is. So when you ask this question, <clears throat> I remember one story from the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Mahapurana. Lord Krishna went to his uncle, maternal uncle Kans, uh, he killed Kans and his two bodyguards and he took over the kingdom. When he took over the kingdom, uh, he asked one of his uncle to take over the kingdom and he said, I will go and take education because we were common, you know, shepherds and we don't know how to rule the country. So he and Balram, they both went for education. And after receiving education in a very short time, he came back, but he wasn't very happy. He was quiet. He wasn't very chirpy or smiling as per his nature. People tried everything. People said that he loves, you know, eating butter. So they gave butter. He did not accept it. He said, no, I don't want butter. I don't like it. And they said, but you loved it in Gokul. So they thought that this butter is not good. Maybe Gokul butter is good. So they ordered it from Gokul fresh. They went, they told the, uh, the gopis and gops of Gokul that Krishna is unhappy. We need butter. So everyone gave their wish butter to him. So, he was still not happy. So, people told Odhavji, his uncle, that you are one of the, you know, well-educated person. Krishna is one of the well-educated person. He has just received his education and he has arrived and we have learned about it, that he has done his education very well. So, why don't you speak to him? Why don't you Ask him what is the problem. So Davji said, yes. Okay, we'll repeat this in Hindi, don't worry. So Davji said, yes, uh, I will go and ask him. So Davji went to him and he said, what is the problem? Why are you so unhappy? Why are you looking so depressed? So what? is that which can take away your sorrow, your depression. Because you are the source of bliss. People call you Narayan, the source of bliss. And then how come you are unhappy? So 
he said, I'm happy because my gops and my gopis, my friends in Gokul, they are unhappy. So you have to go there carefully and <clears throat> you have to touch the feet of Nanda Baba and Yashoda Maya and touch the feet of all the gops and gopis. And you must explain them, you must put them into some kind of sadhana, some meditation, some chanting. You must explain them that God is everywhere, I am everywhere, I am their God. And they are not far away from me. I am in each and every atom. So you rejoice, be happy, don't be depressed. If you will be depressed, God will also be depressed. So. Odhavji would uh, think of himself as a very intelligent, a very learned person. So he said, don't worry, I will go and I will do the needful as fast as possible. So while he was going, he said that, you know, the first impression is last impression. So when I'm going, I cannot go on an ordinary chariot. I need a gold chariot. That same gold chariot which went to receive you, let them recognize that chariot and then let them come to me and then let them ask and then I will tell. If I go and if I tell, it's not good. When he went over there, there was news spreading in Gokul that Odavji has arrived, Odavji has arrived. He has some news, he has some message from Lord Krishna. So, people welcomed him. He bowed down to Yashoda Miya and Nanda Baba. And then he was, you know, meeting various people and he said, I will rest for some time and I will come to the choke, to the open area of the village and we will talk over there. So people were excited. He said, in the afternoon, we will meet after lunch. So he rested for some time. He got ready. He had his food and he came. And people gathered and he was sitting over there. And he said, what is the message? He said, message is Lord Krishna said that he is everywhere in each and every atom. God is everywhere. He is your God. He is in your each and every atom. You don't need His physical presence to be happy, to be joyful in life. The gopis gave him a very beautiful answer. They said that it is easy to preach on fasting when your stomach is full and how stupid it is to preach about the benefits of fasting when your own stomach is full. You are living with Krishna, you see him each and every day, 24 hours a day, you are there as his, you know, uh, advisor, his minister, you are with him all the time, you are, you know, having good time with them and to us you are telling that it's okay to be without Krishna. If it is okay to be without Krishna, you be without Krishna. Send him back to us. Now, this was a valid argument. So, Udhavji got struck. So, he got struck over there. So, this is the necessity of building up an ashram or building up a temple or going to a pilgrimage, going to a Shakti Peet, going to a Jyotirlingam, Chardham, wherever you go. When you have the presence of Divine, physical presence of Divine, that non-physical presence is experience. But when there is no physical presence, you cannot even experience the non-physical presence. So like I always say, air is everywhere. But when you are driving 
and if the air is less in your tire, you get out of the car and invite the air from everywhere that come into my tire, come into my tire, come into my tire. No, you have to go to the gas station and get it filled. Get the air pressure corrected in your tire. So in the same way when God is felt in the physical form of the ashram, in, of the idol, only then we can feel the immediate presence of God. So you want me to repeat in English or you want me to complete the story first, that what happened further? Your father loves you the most in this world. Your mother loves you even more. And God loves you a thousand times more. But if you worship God in the form of mother, there will be no bounds to this love. So, do you want to experience the divine feet of mother? If the answer is yes, join us for the course of Mahashri Vidya. To contact us, please call on the given numbers. Hari Om Tat Sat. So the gopis, they further, you know, started complaining, started crying without being, you know, able to stop. That we have him in our memories, we are missing him so much. He used to tear our clothes, he used to steal our clothes, he used to steal our butter, he used to break our matuki. So Udavji got one more, you know, point, one more idea. He said, uh, you know, you see this Krishna is very mischievous in his physical form. He used to break your matukis, tear your clothes, you know, do all the stupid things. So why do you want him? And apart from that, I'm again explaining you that he is in each and every one of us. Like butter is hidden in the milk. That is what he was trying to, you know, tell you by stealing your butter that I am the butter in the milk. Butter is hidden in the milk. But, you know, you can't see it. That is how Krishna is hidden in each and every one of you. We can't see him. So the gopis, they used one trick. They brought a lamp and filled up milk in it and said, now lit this lamp. Krishna is present in each and every one. Like, Butter is present in the milk. But still you have to churn the butter and get it out. So your child, your Krishna loves it. He loves to eat it. No child loves milk, but they love butter when you add mishri, sugar to it, sweetness to it. So, and the lamp also does not burn without just, you know, putting milk in it. You have to churn the milk, get out the butter and then you put it in the lamp, heat the butter, turn it into ghee, put it in the lamp and then the lamp burns. So, Odavji was stuck again and uh, gopis say that you can see that he broke our matukis, he stole our butter, he tore our clothes, he stole our clothes you can see the broken matuki, but you cannot see a life which is broken. You cannot see a life which is torn off apart without him. So, Odavji played the last card, you know, that he had. That, uh, you know, if you have so much of attachment with the physical form of Lord or anyone, if you have too much of attachment towards anyone, you will turn into a ghost in past life regression. Many of you were there, we have explained this theory of ghost. 
So you will turn into a ghost after your death. And you will be, you know, roaming here and there and there will be no spiritual advancement or liberation for you. So, gopis also had an argument on this. Jai Gurudev, Jai Ma. Did you know that you can read mind of any person that you wish? That you can dissolve any of the physical or mental woes? You heard that right. Our beloved Dr. Shri Tej Guruji has created such a process wherein you can read a person's aura without the help of any external gadget. If you are interested in learning about such a wonderful process, you can associate with us during our upcoming aura course. During this course, you will receive Diksha of some miraculous and powerful mantras. So why wait any longer? Connect with us using the contact details given below and register yourselves for this amazing course. Hariyam Tatsat Adesh Gopi said that no, we will not turn into a ghost. We will merge into him because that much we know that, you know, if our last thought is of him and we leave our life, we leave our breath, we leave our life force after that, we will be merged into him, we will not turn into ghost. So, although he was shocked over here, he said, Yes, this is true. And he said, if we are not restless thinking about him, we will soon forget him. If, if you experience, uh, you know, uh, separation for some, from someone, you remember that person for some time and after that, slowly you recover. So the Hindus have this ritual of 13 days. 13 days you are free from all obligations that you don't have to say even Jai Gurudev or nothing. You cry and if you can't cry, they hire people who come and cry. So 13 days you keep on crying and so after 13 days you are done with it and you can get to work after that. 13 days, 16 days, different people have different things. You can't do even puja or anything. So, he said for that merging, we have the, the Gopi said that we have to be restless always. So, we will remember him always. And the Gops Gopi said that you are telling us to meditate, to chant. What will happen after that? He said, Lord will be in your consciousness, in your mind, in your awareness forever. He said, we are already doing that by being devoted to him, by loving him, by missing him, by crying. So devotion is doing the same thing that your mantra chanting or your meditation is doing. But the problem with mantra chanting and meditation is that, that it is temporary. When you stop chanting, when you stop meditating, uh, the experience of God, the remembrance of God is lost. But when you are in devotion 24 hours, you are just focused and you are just, you know, remembering God and nothing else. And there's a, another beautiful story of Zibran. Zibran is the person who invented, yes, the gibberish language. Z the word gibberish uh, got its name from Zibran. So one day, Zibran was going on his donkey with his disciples following him, walking. And a very mad man, naked man, came in front of his donkey and hold the reins of donkey. Now, he said, wait, Zibran. So the students came to, you know, move him aside, hit him. But Zibran said, wait, don't do this. What he wants to ask, let him ask. So he asks that, I want to ask you that whose enlightenment is bigger? Is it Mansur Mastana, Mansur Al-Halas enlightenment, 
bigger than the enlightenment of Hazrat Muhammad or Hazrat Muhammad's enlightenment is bigger than Mansur al-Halas's enlightenment. There are levels of enlightenment. There are different levels of enlightenment. So, when he was talking about this, Zibran said that I want to answer, but I will only answer after I know the reason why you are asking this question. He said, because there is a reason why you are asking this. You tell me what is the reason. He said, the reason is that, you know, the last words of Mansur when he was being chopped off. Mansur al-Halas, Mansur Masana was the founder of Sufism. Sufism is not considered Islam by uh, most of the uh, traditional Islam, you know, outfit. Sufism does everything that uh, Islam says no to do. They drink, they don't perform namaz, they don't keep uh, roza, they don't wear burqa. There are five things that they don't do. They don't read the Quran. Huh? So, uh, he said when Mansur was dying, his last words were that all that is to be known is known. Not exactly, but is all last words meant the same. Ya ilaha illallah. And Hazrat Muhammad, when he died, just three days before his death, he cried and he prayed that, Forgive me, O Lord, O Allah. I could not know you the way you deserve to be known. So whose enlightenment was higher? Zibran closed his eyes and he said that for sure the enlightenment of Hazrat Muhammad was much, much bigger than the enlightenment of Mansur al-Halas. The madman asked why to Zibran. Zibran said because Mansur al-Halas, the devotion, the love, was over after enlightenment. He said everything has been known. But for Hazrat Muhammad, the desire, the enlightenment, the thirst to love God, to know God, was not even, you know, shattered even a little bit. Because he said that I have not known you the way you deserve to be known. You can never know God completely. And if you accept that, you are a true jnani, you are a true, you know, person of wisdom. And apart from that, beyond that, more than that, you are a true, true, true devotee of Lord, which is bigger than being enlightened or being intelligent or jnani. So, uh, this is the story of why, you know, a Tirtha temple is necessary. I hope you have understood because Odovji understood that Lord Krishna never wanted the gopis to learn anything from this conversation. Lord Krishna needed him to understand that with all his knowledge, with all his, you know, meditation and sadhana and chanting, he will be nowhere close to gopis if devotion is lacking in him. Everyone who is after knowledge, meditation, chanting, know this, you will go nowhere without, you know, being in devotion, in love with the Divine, with your Ma, with your Guru. If you are not in devotion, then it's useless. So gopis, they gave, you know, various gifts to Odavji for Lord Krishna and said, you can please 
if you can give it to Krishna. Udhavji went back and uh, he gave the gifts to Krishna and he touched the feet of Krishna and said, mission is complete. I have understood that I was sent to understand and not to make them understand. So, Lord Krishna said, now that you are a devotee, tell me what do you want? He said that with all that I know, with all the knowledge that I have, with all my past lives that I have seen with your grace, I know one thing, that I am not in a position to ask for a boon that I will be born as a gop or a gopi in my next life. But he said, I know that I have so much punya in my account, so much merits in my account of merits and sin that I can ask for one thing, that in my next life, let me be born as a grass in Gokul. And when I am born as a grass in Vrindavan, in Gokul, this gopis and gopis who have lived with you, who are your devotees, they will be, put their feet on me and they will walk. And I will be blessed when I will be crushed under their feet. When I will offer them a soft bed over the hard earth, to walk, I will be blessed when they walk over me, when your cows will walk over me and eat me, I will be blessed and maybe after that I, will, I might receive some qualities of them to be a devotee like them. So such a wonderful story. Now we will repeat it in Hindi Hari Om Tatsat.